America. This is Democracy Now! Broadcasting live from Copenhagen. It's Climate Countdown. I believe we can act boldly and decisively in the face of a common threat. That's why I come here today, not to talk, but to act. President Obama addresses what's supposed to be the last day of the U.N. climate summit here in Copenhagen. Uncertainty still looms over the fate of the talks. Major divisions remain between rich and poor countries. We'll speak with Lumumba Diaping, chair of the G77, the largest bloc of developing countries. For me, it means simply I will accept the total destruction of my continent, her people, in Copenhagen. That I would not do. Democracy Now! revealed yesterday U.N. documents determine global temperatures would rise by 3 degrees Celsius under the current emissions targets. That's a degree above what rich countries are promising. We question U.S. congressional leaders Waxman, Hoyer and Markey. We also speak with Rajendra Pachauri, the chair of the U.N.'s Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. It's Climate Countdown. We're broadcasting live from Copenhagen. I'm Amy Goodman. President Obama's joined the Copenhagen Climate Summit talks, but with no new proposals to break the deadlock, many have blamed in large part on his administration. Obama addressed the plenary today with a call on world leaders to act, quote, boldly and decisively. But he offered no change to the U.S. offer to reduce emissions by just 4 percent of 1990 levels, despite authoritative scientific calls for a 25 to 40 percent reduction. Obama also reiterated the U.S. U.S. pledged to contribute to a $10 billion global climate fund that poorer nations have dismissed as insufficient. We'll have excerpts of Obama's address after headlines. The summit was shaken up Thursday after confidential U.N. documents showed the currently proposed emissions cuts would increase global temperatures by an average 3 degrees Celsius. The disclosure contradicts promises from world leaders to cap increases at 2 degrees. The new figure is double the 1.5 degrees Celsius called for by developing countries, which would require limiting carbon dioxide emissions at 350 parts per million. Jade Lingard of the French news website Mediapart broke the story on Democracy Now! Yeah, a very interesting leak today uh, from the UNFCCC secretariat showing that the targets of reduction emissions that countries now, today, are putting on the table, these targets do not allow to stay below 2 degree rise in temperature. And they even say that it could lead us to a rise of 3 degree in temperature, which is, as we know, catastrophic, if that ever happens. Civil society delegates remain barred from the talks on the summit's final day. Thousands have had their access revoked since Wednesday. In a statement, Dorothy Guerrero, a focus on the Global South, said, quote, the people of the Global South are particularly being silenced, but with or without the negotiations, an inclusive movement that brings together the aspirations of communities from both the North and South is growing to find just and equitable solutions to the climate crisis. Activist groups, meanwhile, are accusing Danish police of an elaborate spying and detention operation to undermine their protests over the summit's two weeks. Court hearings for two jailed organizers have revealed police use wiretaps to monitor activist phone calls. Protesters say undercover agents posed as demonstrators to infiltrate crowds and make arrests. Three climate justice action spokespeople involved with Wednesday's Reclaim Power action at the Bella Center, meanwhile, have been charged following their arrests earlier this week. Taggio Mueller has been charged with incitement, while two others have been charged with violence against police officers and disorder. Conduct. Mueller has been jailed for the last four days. Footage has emerged of scores of detained activists following the police raid on the autonomous community of Christiania earlier this week. The Denmark Indie Media video shows the activists chanting inside their jail cells. Yeah. 
on the eve of the summit's final day, two activists with the group Greenpeace interrupted a state dinner for over 100 world leaders at the Danish royal palace. Dressed in formal evening wear, the couple unfurled banners reading, Politicians Talk, Leaders Act. The action came one day after two activists briefly interrupted the summit plenary, chanting slogans for climate justice. Climate justice actions, meanwhile, continue in the United States. On Thursday, the environmental group Greenpeace gathered at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Washington, unfurling a banner resembling yellow police tape. Greenpeace activists declared the chamber's headquarters a climate crime scene. This is the Greenpeace Climate Crimes Unit. We are declaring the U.S. Chamber of Commerce a climate crime scene. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce and other dirty industry lobbyists have taken the future of our planet hostage. They are undercutting America's efforts to stop runaway climate change, and as a result, world leaders are not reaching a deal in Copenhagen. We demand that the industry lobbyists cease and desist. Also in Washington, over a dozen youth activists held a sit-in at the State Department. Organizers say they held the action in solidarity with Thursday's youth inside the Bella Center, protesting the exclusion of civil society delegates and calling for a fair binding deal. In Pakistan, at least 16 people have been killed in a U.S. drone attack. The bombing struck a tribal area in North Waziristan. In Afghanistan, the U.S. has launched a major combat operation in the Uzbin Valley. Five U.S. special forces have reportedly been wounded in the early stages of the attack. The new assault comes as the U.S. has begun sending the first wave of the 30,000 additional troops ordered by President Obama earlier this month. On Thursday, the 1st Marine Battalion and de <clears throat> deployed under the escalation, left Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Battalion member Lance Corporal Joseph Jones was asked about his mission. This is what we do. We kick down doors and we look for people, shoot at people. This is what we do. This is what I signed up to do. I don't know about everyone else. The U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, Carl Eikenberry, meanwhile, has given new indications the U.S. expects to remain beyond its 2011 timeline. Speaking before an Afghan audience Thursday, Eikenberry said, quote, this is not a deadline, despite what some people in the United States and Afghanistan have said. It's entirely based on the conditions that exist at that time, he said. The Pentagon has acknowledged militants in Iraq and Afghanistan have used Internet software to hack into live video feeds of U.S. drones. The intercepts could have helped militants evade drone attacks. Pentagon officials said they've long known unencrypted feeds were vulnerable for hacking, but didn't think militants would take advantage. Newly released figures show the ratio of Pentagon contractors to military personnel is at an all-time high. The Senate Contract Oversight Subcommittee revealed Thursday contractors now comprise 69 percent of total Pentagon employees. The number of private contractors in Afghanistan grew 40 percent between June and September. The number of armed contractors doubled in size to more than 10,000. The Western Sahara human rights activist Aminatu Haidar has returned home after a more than month-long hunger strike that brought her close to death. Haidar began her hunger strike after Moroccan officials barred her from returning to Western Sahara until she, unless she would recognize Moroccan sovereignty over her homeland. On Thursday, Morocco relented under a deal brokered with France and Spain. Haidar was released from intensive care and flown to the Western Sahara city of Layoun earlier today. Haidar called her return, quote, a triumph for international law, for human rights, for international justice and for the cause of Western Sahara.